Hey, this is Jared Cochran with Family Church. Welcome to our podcast. I'm excited that you're here. I hope that God moves through this message to reach you so he can move through your life. Be sure to share and subscribe so that we can reach the world with God's word. Enjoy the message. Welcome to the family. Welcome back to another wonderful Wednesday. We are live. I am Kelsey. This time. <laughs> Kelsey on the couch. Name. That'd be hilarious if I didn't put your name back on the. Uh, did you? On the yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure. I take one week off. Bam! Boom! The whole thing she changes. Did great. It was a lot of fun. We yeah, obviously it was pre-recorded because we had softball the tournament. You could tell you guys were having a good time. It flowed naturally. I tried to get her to come back today, and she was like, "No, no, no help. They've got uh, they've got Charlotte coming over for a sleepover, so Ooh. we can go as, as long as we need to. <laughs> this no, is a, a six hour edition of Welcome to the Family <laughs> we're Room. We're just going to go. It's going to be like old school revival. We'll just we were going. watching from uh, where we were, and it was really good. You could tell she was. She started out a little iffy, but then got super relaxed and settled into her rhythm. And you were having a hard time getting a word in edgewise. She's got a lot of great thoughts. <laughs> yeah, she was like, He kept cutting me off. I'm like, I'm sorry. I wasn't meaning to, but it was. We were just <laughs> bouncing off of each other. It was great. And I looked up at the time, we were like, an hour, twenty minutes over what the countdown Good was. Lord, I'm like, oh man, we should we should probably wrap this up. But it it was great. While we're getting going tonight, uh, let us know where you're watching from. We are live this time again from St. Augustine. Let us know uh, real quick uh, the events we've got. Dining with Dignity. The next one is June sixth. Coming up. Uh, actually, and I'll just say the um, the movie night that we had with mm-hmm. the youth, that was a lot of fun. That was cool. They had a good time. Youth every Tuesday night at 6 Well, o'clock. we are changing it up for the summer. That's so right. this Tuesday for the youth, this Tuesday will be the last one uh, weekly. And then we're going to a monthly thing for the summer just because yes. everybody's, everybody's traveling and doing all that stuff. So we're going to, instead of a weekly Tuesday for youth... We're going to be going to um, just once a month, and then we're going to make everything uh, like, like a big that. event. I like we're going to have a big to water chill. day kind of thing on one of them mm-hmm. and all that. And then um, I think when school kicks back off, we will be resuming, and we will be introducing uh, Duel. All right. So that'll be fun. We'll be uh, we'll still be providing uh, you support. Know, some support for them. Right on. But uh, I'm looking forward to that. I'll That's give an him, exciting Give him a shout out because he's building your team. Going to SEU like me. So, you know, it's a good school. It's a great, great school. Building your team with college graduates. Come right. on. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for the young and the willing and the able. Say that to three be times louder. The young, willing, and the able. I'm not going to yell. They're coming. Phone. I told you, we were talking today, and I told you, I've got this feeling that, that, that what Kathy was talking about Sunday, the suddenly. We'll get to that in just a minute, but the suddenly she was talking about, we were sitting in staff today, and we were ta- or yesterday, and talking. I had this strong feeling that, man, all of that stuff is just going to happen suddenly. There's something, there's, there's something's moving, something's changing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> something's moving. Uh, yeah, no, I, I've been feeling, I've been feeling it, and like that, the Sunday was so much confirmation. Y'all got up, for anybody that uh, is not serving, you're missing out because you're not serving. Team. You also missed. Sunday's team meeting was, in, it was incredible, and then we had that huge prayer at the end of it. Like, you could tell the Holy Spirit was already there. God was, he was ready to move. Y'all preached, like, half my sermon. <laughs> I was right. sitting back there, right. I'm like, stop, uh, stop, 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 stop. Okay. Uh, it was confirmation. Just I had, uh, confirming it. Before I had some stuff in the back pocket that I was glad that y'all didn't, you know, touch on, and we'll get into that. But uh, yeah, it was it, it was a great, it was a good time. Super I've been excited. feeling stuff, moving stuff, stuff. Super starting excited. To shift. Young couples, young families are streaming into the church, and I think it's because of you and Kelsey, your influence, and how that that's all now is naturally progressing in that area. I truly believe that all of those leaders and laborers that we've been praying for are, are coming suddenly. Musicians and singers are coming suddenly. You're you're training new keyboard players already. Uh, people that are preparing and, and sometimes it feels like in the church that you're you're kind of almost like stopped or stuck or waiting in that stasis moment. But what is happening in that moment, if you truly trust God, is that all those things are coming into place. Those puzzle pieces are, and I'm telling you, and I'm going to say it prophetically, hmm. that when it happens, it's going to be a suddenly and things are going to just step into place and all of a sudden it's just going to be another explosion 
that people are going to be excited to watch. And it's always exciting to be a part of stuff like that, but you're going to experience that. That's you just, going to happen. Yeah, you just gave me some confirmation for, for this Sunday, too. So yeah. uh, Come on. Yeah, the, uh, the real quick, the rest of the announcements before we get way off track. Like Kelsey We're already Madden. excited. I've been gone for a week. <laughs> <laughs> the next Women's Fellowship. The night is uh, June thirteenth. That's six thirty to seven thirty. All the ladies and all this stuff is on our website, familychurch.social/events. Uh, you can find it by going to familychurch.social and going up to the connect tab, and then going to events. The men's group Beast Feast, June twenty second. Come on, four to seven p.m. Let's go. I am really looking forward. Well, to lots that. of oh, folks are already talking about that. I'm ready, and I gotta find. Whatever I want to cook in. I'm gonna grill. make some oxtail. Are you? Mm-hmm. I don't know what I want to do. Yeah, we're going all after. But, but guys, guys put in the comments what I should cook for the beast feast. <laughs> <laughs> Say Carolyn. it. Whatever you're cooking, guys. If you have not registered for that, it's on the website. It's on the website. They can go to that. You can register for it. You can tell us right there what you are going to be preparing. The church is going to provide all the sides and all the drinks and all that. But we're asking the men who are participating to create something. Beast feast. It, it makes some possum. Cook some armadillo. Cook a raccoon. I don't care, but yeah, I do care. I don't like raccoon. <laughs> that sounds like like a little too close to getting rabies. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> right? Somebody go just shovel something up off the side of the Woo! road. Cook Found some road kill. Uh, uh, and it's going to be good. And it's going to be on the twenty second of June at four from four to seven, the week after Father's Day. So it's going to be fantastic. Yes. Oh, and then with the youth, Kelsey was saying Brooke, uh, Duel, me, and uh, Kelsey will be doing some. Some brainstorming to come up with hardcore, hardcore brainstorming, brainstorming to come up with what we're doing with the. I'm scared this table's gonna fall apart like it did earlier again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly, the the art of marriage uh, little mini conference yes. thing that we have going on. That's June 28th and 29th, uh, Rick and 5:30 Robbie. p.m. Um, Rick and, and Robbie are teaching that. Is. It's going to be great, and I, I think we are already seeing record yeah. numbers of people. Re- Registering for that. 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And I don't remember the time. I think this Saturday, 10.30 to 4.30. 10 th- well, because that's that's after food bank. So I think, I can't remember if we changed the time. They may have changed it a little bit. So they, don't hold they us to that. But Welcome to everybody who's watching. Glad you guys are there. Tanya is disappointed that Kelsey's not here. Aren't we all? I I pushed for it. I said, you need to start being the face. You're not be as here pretty in the chair. to look at He's right. as she is. I'm not as nice as she is. I'm not as pretty. <laughs> I don't have the hair. Wait, I can't do the. <laughs> What's used that? To, That's the good. Kelsey hair flip. <laughs> I don't remember that at all. I was watching from a Roba and I saw the hair flip. So, oh, all right. I'm ready. I'm, 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 this is still Here we go. in me, especially with everything. So, Dose of the Ghost. Sunday. Did that bring back any? Oh, man. Any, like uh, you said, in the, the old I was days. excited about it. It was Pentecost Sunday. It's your very first Pentecost Sunday, not the last, but your I've very the first. i the big ones. I got Easter this year and Pentecost. Oh, yeah. I'm like, well, you, why not? Fired up. Let's go. And in the team meeting, well, you could already tell, it was a spirit-filled event, spirit-filled day, and then the, the music and everything just flowed right into it. And when you started, we have a lot of spirit-filled people in the building. And they were excited about the focus. You know, a lot of churches on Pentecost Sunday, they don't even think about it. They don't talk about it. You no, went straight yeah. How do you not? I mean, a dose of the ghost. What do we need do in the church? Not. More power. I hope I said it enough that it stuck with people. I saw some some uh, posts and comments mm-hmm. quoting the, the dose of the ghost little yep. phrase thing. And one thing, let's do it tonight because I didn't do it Sunday. I wanted... And I meant, that's why I grabbed my phone when I, when I came on the, the stage and I completely forgot, but I wanted everybody to post the dove emoji on their page just because it was Pentecost Sunday, just a little, you know, fun and little thing. Forgot. So, uh, yeah, throw, throw, uh, throw the little dove emoji in the chat when you, when you get there. It'll take me too long to but, find it. <laughs> well, you can search. You just literally go to emoji and then hit the search bar and type dove. Well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, Cook a the raccoon Pentecost sticks. story. <laughs> I started in Acts one, verses one through eight. Mm-hmm. Talked about all that Jesus began to teach, because as we know in the former book Theophilus, uh, Luke was writing Jesus's earthly ministry, mm-hmm. and we begin 
the dose of the ghost sermon with the end of his earthly ministry Mm -hmm. and moving into the beginning of the Christian church where we are today. Mm -hmm. And he told them to wait for the gift. That stood out to me so much. Wait for the gift, Mm -hmm. the gift of the ghost. The gift of the ghost. Be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and you will receive power Pentecost when Sunday. the Holy Spirit comes on you. Pentecost is 50 days after the resurrection. It's the word Pentecost. That's what it means. And the signification of that is that that's the day Acts chapter 2 became a reality. The Holy Spirit was poured out on the church, tongues of fire, the upper room, that experience and all of that. Uh, the church was born in power. I'm irrelevant. You see in the they comments, everybody's like, where's Kelsey? Everybody, where's Kelsey at tonight? <laughs> I feel like, a, I feel like a substitute teacher. <laughs> where is Miss Kelsey? <laughs> so one thing that we were talking about um, before we got on um, was the thing that I had quoted from um, about the churches in Revelation, mm-hmm. where the interesting thing uh, in the churches in Revelation is uh, pretty much only two of them were scolded for false doctrine mm-hmm. Uh, out of the seven, and all the rest kind of had to deal with a lack of spiritual vitality and fervency. That was good. A lack of the Holy Spirit, essentially. So what's amazing to me is nowadays there's all of this focus on pretty much everybody under the sun, according to, you know, the internet and Google, they're all false prophets. All false prophets. Easy everybody there say. is, you know, all the armchair theologians that uh, went to, you know, uh, cemetery on the internet, apparently. Uh, you know, every there it is, the doves. I love it. But uh, ah. yeah, so everybody thinks it's all false prophets. And what Jesus, not that that wasn't a problem. Clearly, it is a problem. But what was more of a problem was a lack of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And to me, so something I was thinking about today, and I, and I wish I'd have thought about it Sunday, the Pentecost is pretty much the first revival. In a sense. Oh, That's yeah, how absolutely. I would think yeah, of it. Yeah. Pentecost mm-hmm. is, you know, that is the, the first day that the Holy Spirit gets poured out. Mm-hmm. That's the first revival. 3,000 3, people. people get saved. Come uh, on. The Lord added to the number every day. So Daily. it's clear we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Ghost. So I, that was just, I thought about that today and I was like, man, I wish I'd have. Super thankful. Thought of that. I was born and raised in a spirit filled church where there was a great emphasis on the Holy Spirit, his presence, his power, the teacher, the comforter, uh, the friend, all of those things. It was natural to us. And I am concerned that in the, the contemporary church, the contemporary version of the church, that, that there is a, a movement away from that. We've lost that spiritual vitality. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy as a father to hear a son, but to see a young preacher focusing in on that, the spiritual vitality, how important that is to have, to not be ashamed and to have the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit in your life and in active in the church. Well, you can see with, um, with all like the stuff, it, that's what's neat, I guess, about the algorithm for social media is you always end up with more videos of what you watch. So all the stuff that you spend time on, you get more of that. So you get, for me, I get a lot of uh, preaching clips and you can see is what, what you can see is just to me. And we've mentioned it before, how it appears how there is the revival is coming and God is building up, um, and sustaining and increasing the churches that I believe that are, you know, from the Holy Spirit. And I'm sure there's some that, you know, are probably not what they should be because obviously Satan is, you know, ruling the earth. But I think for the majority, God is building up the church that he deems Mm -hmm. uh, should be open. And the doors that they shouldn't Mm -hmm. be open are the ones that shut, the ones that, you know, went into it because Mm -hmm. they wanted a platform, not because they had a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how you see that there's just that shortage of the spirit. Because you could watch those clips and not to judge people off of, you know, Mm -hmm. 60 seconds. But you can kind of, when you see enough of them, you can feel like, okay, this guy's just spewing out a bunch of words, Mm -hmm. but none of it makes any sense. Mm -hmm. And and it's just, it doesn't, like, you can, you know what I'm saying? Like, when Mm -hmm. you watch someone it's like you can just feel that the Holy Spirit is on mm-hmm. them and the anointing is on them and the what they're saying. And they've got that that seal, that stamp of approval. And then you watch someone else and you're just like, yeah. you ain't got it. You're, it's you're that intangible. It's that beautiful yeah. thing that's so real. I don't know what all this is about. But, <laughs> Going um, crazy. Um, but the intangible of it all, Paul said, 
when I came to you, I did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, but I came to you in the demonstration of the Spirit and power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He came in the demonstration of the Spirit and power. Paul said in the last days there would be a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. So I think that that's one of the greatest missing links in the contemporary New Testament church is that element of power. I grew up in it, and what what I didn't like was the wildfire. I mean, you, we've, we've all seen services like that where it's just like everybody gets all swept up in their emotions and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's, there's, there's difference. My pastor used to always say, don't worry about the wildfire. There's, there's enough wet blankets to put it out <laughs> of wet <laughs> yeah, blankets in the true. church. But to have the, that moving and the anointing and some the, the, the unpredictability, I don't know what all that's about. The unpredictability. Well, the hard part is that we have the delay. Mm-hmm. Um, but the unpredictability of the Holy Spirit. But when the Holy Spirit is truly active in a place, lives are changed, souls are won, bodies are healed, bondages are broken, all of that because of that, because of his power. I saw, uh, while I was studying for this, actually, I saw there was like a 17-minute a clip that went, I guess, around a while ago. It was uh, Kenneth Hagin mm-hmm. in one of his services where it was just, Everybody was one of those moments where it was just they were all swept up, that whole drunken the the Holy Spirit kind yep. of thing, and they mm-hmm. were all just going. And it was like I didn't watch the I watched a little bit of it, and then I ended up turning it off um, just because I didn't want to watch seventeen minutes of, <laughs> of that. So judge me if you want to, but you know, yeah, there's I think that's hilarious that there's enough wet blankets to. What were you hoping from? Out. As a result from this sermon, you know, the word as it's sowed out on good ground, it brings forth 30, 60, 100 fold. What were you hoping would be the result of that, that word for that day? You know, I don't, I, I, it's weird. I guess I don't go into any of them thinking about that. I've got like, you know, the bottom line, what I want to get across mm-hmm. that we need more of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I guess I, did, now that you bring it up, I don't think I've like walked up here thinking I want to see, mm-hmm. you know, X happen. I just, you know, I'm like, okay, here's the bottom line. I feel like God wants me to get this point across, but we need more of the Holy Spirit. But I wasn't, I didn't think like, okay, yeah, I'm hoping, you know, the crowd's going to do this and all that. And then psh, I was just, you know, Holy mm-hmm. Spirit, show up, show off and and mm-hmm. do your thing. And I just go into each one uh, saying what I feel like God is leading me and wanting me to say. And mm-hmm. by when I get done, I just, the only thing that goes through my mind is I hope I'd I did it the right way. Well, you're a vessel. You, all that I'm You've said about. that many times. I'm just a vessel, and that vessel is open to speak whatever that the oracle at the moment, whatever the word is for the moment. And so, uh, welcome to everybody who's joined us along the way. If you joined us after we started, uh, did you have a favorite point? Was this a quote or something? I, I wrote down several things, and I told you I was going to bring you back to this one. Maintaining mm-hmm. doctrinal purity is important, but not more important than the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so that was from um, that one book by Jim Simbala, and he said it wasn't the whole picture for the New Testament church because they wanted to do a lot more than just hold the fort. Obviously, um, and I'm sure if <laughs> maybe eventually this will come back up, but if we had that larger platform, I'm sure people would be ripping that little clip up and saying yes. that, you know, I'm saying, oh, we don't Ignore need doctrine the in the church. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we do need doctrine. We need false, or, not false, we need correct <laughs> theology. Now, that one's going to get clipped up. We need to not have false theology. Obviously, we need to be preaching the true and the correct word of God, mm-hmm. the correct doctrine of God. But you can get anybody that can just go to a school and then sit up here and recite a school book of the, I mean, I used the systematic theology book up here and you could just stand in front of the group and read that it's dry. No one's going to want that. That doesn't make you called by God, just getting up and reciting the history essentially of the book. So yeah, we do need doctrine, but as we know, the Holy spirit is what makes our witness more effective. And Mm -hmm. obviously between the great commission and the day of Pentecost, Jesus telling them, Hey, you're supposed to be witnesses. You're supposed to get this message out. And the Holy Spirit is the the the, the vessel and the power, mm-hmm. or I guess we're the vessel. He's the power that works through us to make the effective witness, to make the mm-hmm. witness more effective. It, you know, he's the one that ultimately convicts people's hearts and lets them know whether they, well, lets them know that they do need Jesus. And it's, you know, you can get up and stand on any street corner mm-hmm. and talk whatever under the sun 
But if you don't have the Holy Spirit moving through you and mm-hmm. pulling at that person's heart, yeah. I mean, you may as well be talk, talking into the wind. Yep. And as it relates to a point about doctrinal purity, the Holy Spirit is the one that guides you into the truth. And so when you are dependent upon the Holy Spirit and when you are baptized, when, when you are full of the Holy Spirit, when you're flowing in the Spirit, you recognize uh, false doctrine. You mm-hmm. recognize false teachers, false teaching, the discerning of spirits. It's the, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So you know that. You, you can see it. It's easy to flow in that. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that we really need to get back towards is the Holy Spirit. And, you know, one of my, one of my and, I, and I harp on it all the time, especially on here, is just, but it's with this point. Like, obviously, doctrinal purity is good. But there's so much stuff on the internet now that, oh, this person's wrong, and they said this mm-hmm. wrong, and if you're not preaching this way, that's not correct. You need to, I see that all the time with the mm-hmm. churches that I want. Oh, they're, they're a false teacher and they're mm-hmm. giving false theology and, you know, they're a mile wide and an inch thick because, oh, they're not preaching verse by verse. And it's like, mm-hmm. dude, like, right. we're the ones, well, not we, but it's like man is the ones that have come up with, oh, if you're not preaching this way, mm-hmm. it's not correct. Look at the Sermon on the Mount. Did Jesus go verse by verse? And it was very short. The Sermon on the Mount was probably just 20 saying, minutes to like, deliver. You look Skip at the, the, the Peter mm-hmm. on the day of Pentecost and, and mm-hmm. you know, all the other... Super short sermon. The messages, it's like they didn't go verse by verse. They mm-hmm. spoke from the heart. They spoke what Jesus, you know, taught them and all that. And it was like, mm-hmm. where did we get that? You have to do it this way or it's wrong. Mm-hmm. If you don't do it this way and it's wrong. And if you're not worshiping this way, it's wrong. And worship all needs right. to sound like this. You know, the same thing where, oh, if it's not hymns, it's not correct. And it's like, I think it's if just hymns easy. are the only thing that's correct, then throw the whole book of Psalms out of the Bible. It's my opinion that that's just easy and it's lazy. It's the laziest way to do it, to point out what you hate, what you don't like, what you're mad at, who you disagree with. Oh, yeah. Rather than just focus on the truth and speaking the truth. You know, when when I was in the police academy years ago, I've said this story many times that when the Secret Service is training to learn how to spot counterfeit uh, bills, they, they don't look at counterfeit bills. They look at the real bill yeah. until they know it so well that when they see a counterfeit, they immediately go, oh, I know. So that's to me, that's similar to what the God does to the Holy Spirit while we stay in the Word, while we study the Word. You made a point, and I liked it. It was really was because I think there's a lack of this. Um in spirit-filled churches, it's almost like everything is about spirit, 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 spirit. But Jesus plainly said, the Holy Spirit will not speak of himself. He will speak of me. Mm-hmm. One of the points that you made was the Holy Spirit will always point you back to Jesus. Yep, that was so, actually the way that you just said it was almost exactly how I heard uh, Billy Graham said the same mm-hmm. thing. He said, if you find a church that's always Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm then that's the wrong place because the Holy Spirit always points to Jesus. He came not to boast about himself, not to talk about yes. himself. He came to point everybody to Jesus, the only way, the only truth, the only life. So, yeah, I mean, obviously we need the Holy Spirit, but all of that is to focus and talk about Jesus and point everybody to Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is what, like we said, pulls out their hearts, gives them the conviction and lets them know and makes the the witness effective and yes. that is just that that's why you know doctrinal purity great but we need we need the holy spirit we have to be filled with the holy spirit yep and he always points everything points back to jesus yes powerful always i loved uh the whole the whole um the promise of the holy spirit in john 14 and then yes. the provision of the holy spirit the first time um when they after they met with Jesus after the uh, resurrection, when he breathed into them. And then when I was studying that and finding that that was the same Greek word that goes, or that was used um, in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Old Testament, breathed when it was the same thing used for God breathing into Adam. And mm-hmm. just, that was good. Just like that, like something so small, but so significant, like mm-hmm. Jesus breathing them breathing the Holy Spirit into them. And that is, hey, that is, that this is your new life. This mm-hmm. is eternal life. That's the seal. That's the stamp of, uh, that's the stamp of approval and eternal life, the stamp of salvation, being the Holy Spirit, just breathing on them. And then the same thing with, uh, you know, Ezekiel 37, the, the dry bones and, and breathing back into them, just mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit is, it's the breath of life, that breath of fresh air that we all need. Mm-hmm. 
The Spirit of God. Kathy Murray, glad to have you back up there in Sandy Ridge. A good comment. The Holy Spirit is God, part of the Trinity. You pointed that out. You pointed that out Sunday that he is as part of the Trinity, a very important part, relevant and important. Mm-hmm. So many times in, in churches these days, he gets overlooked. Yes. It, you know, it, we, we spend so much time, I think, focusing on this and focusing on that. And then it's just, you know, the, there's clearly just not enough focus mm-hmm. on the Holy Spirit. Not that that needs to be the main focus, but clearly we've backed off from, from him too much that mm-hmm. We've lost some of that power, and it's you time said to there step is a back shortage of the spirit. There is definitely a shortage of the spirit, and that is why we've got to we've got to get back to repenting and getting filled with mm-hmm. with the Holy Spirit and and seeking His power mm-hmm. to make ministry effective. And the whole thing of ministry is not just what happens on the stage from mm-hmm. the pulpit. Ministry is what happens uh, around your dinner table with your kids and your mm-hmm. spouse. Ministry is what happens even around the dinner table with your family, family at you know Thanksgiving or Christmas. Ministry is what happens at, at your job, uh, in the grocery store, in the line at schools, talking to your kids' teachers. I mean, you, you are called to witness and be a minister to people. And it's not that you need to have the entire Bible memorized, mm-hmm. but you know the Holy Spirit will give you the words and, and tell you what. I mean, Jesus literally told the disciples that. He would give them the words for what to say. So it's mm-hmm. we get so tripped up on worrying about <laughs> a cop was next to death. Um, we get we get so tripped up worrying about what to say instead of even trying to say mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. What I've always loved about the Holy Spirit in the, in in our lives and in the church is as as I guess it's just part of my nature. I've always kind of liked a structure. I've, I've been a very structured person my whole life, but it's surprising to me that in this area, what I really love about the Holy Spirit is that unpredictability, the presence of the Spirit, how you know, He just comes in the mighty suddenly. There came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it transformed that whole thing, transformed all of them, empowered them in a moment. Um, and that unpredictability of the Holy Spirit, and when He shows up in our in our churches. Um, what happens, man? The conviction that comes, and suddenly lives are changing. And one one person is standing there laughing, and the next person is standing there weeping, and it's all okay. It's all a part of what God is doing in that moment. I love that little phrase. We today in the church we have a shortage of the Spirit. Tell me. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of that too. The 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 problem with the churches is that. <laughs> we're so used to not seeing him that when he does show up and people yeah. start weeping or laughing or mm-hmm. dancing mm-hmm. and you know, whatever that we don't, we don't realize that he's working on them in that moment. And we mm-hmm. just look at it like it's weird. Right. And, and, and it's just, it's so shocking to, mm-hmm. I uh, still fight with that, with the Christian culture because mm-hmm. we're so used to not seeing it. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how, depressing it is the shortage of the mm-hmm. spirit is just that we're not used to seeing any of that in like like tongues i mean you see in acts every time there was an outpouring people started speaking in tongues and now it's like if you go into church mm-hmm. and you've never heard of it you're like whoa what is this right. and then you know oh well there needs to be this happen and, and all that and it's like come on and, and what i say the story that i anymore. told in the um team meeting was, you know, we, we never know how people are going to receive what the Holy Spirit is doing at that moment. And in our minds, we're thinking, uh-oh, this is going to turn them off. I find that 90% of the time is the exact opposite. There's a compelling, there's a witness somewhere inside of them that they go, wow, this is supernatural. This is not boring church. This is burning church. This is something different. And the Spirit bears witness with their spirit that this is real. I told you in the team meeting about the young man who said, whenever that guy speaks in tongues, I get it. I don't understand it. I don't know anything about it. But man, I just get excited about it. (laughs) And I'm thinking that's, that's that element. That's it. Yeah. He's working, working right there, you know, working in that person while, while they're speaking in tongues, he's Mm -hmm. working in the other person. That's the, the amazingness of it is just, him being everywhere yeah. and working on everyone in the moment that he needs to be working on or is that is letting, uh, like Kathy said, maybe not a shortage in the spirit, but in receptive hearts mm-hmm. being that, you know, he's, he wants to work in all of us. Like I was mm-hmm. saying all Sunday, you know, God desires us to have this power. He wants mm-hmm. us to have this power. The whole thing with Moses 
praying and essentially, you know, wishing for the day that mm-hmm. we would all have access to this. And we do, but mm-hmm. no one focuses on getting filled with the Holy Spirit anymore. We just think, okay, well, just, you know, make mm-hmm. Jesus your Lord and Savior and, and bring him mm-hmm. into your heart. And then, you know, you know you'll know, you have a, a Lamborghini in, in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, like God is your glorified bank account. And he's like, man, there's so much more work that I want you yes. to do and so much that I've called you to do. And you need my spirit for this purpose, yes. but y'all are, we're just too focused on the wrong things. And, you know, I think that's, that's well, you one, said, of one of the One of the things you said too, was that he empowers us to share the gospel. 95% of all Christians, if that number is still holds, have never led a single person to Christ themselves personally. That's probably, it's probably more than that. More than that. 95% <laughs> probably higher, but living a spirit filled life, um, he puts you in situations. He gives you unction. You can speak a word. You can say something. He'll give you the power to, to speak at the right time. And when you say that, they, he'll the make word, somebody hear something you didn't even say. That's a fact. Yes, I've heard it. You've said stuff uh-huh. that you've thrown back, and I'm like, I don't remember. I didn't say that. saying that at all. And I've I've heard other uh, preachers talk about that, where somebody mm-hmm. will come up and do them in a store, I, and they're like, man, the I love Sunday you said. when you said this. And he's like, I I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But it's just. That's, that's that's what the they thing heard with the whole the whole Holy Spirit. Yeah, I, just it's moving a, it's a, around and working presence. on people. I and love it. Like, we need to to be in prayer, just like the New Testament church in that day, to pray that the Holy Spirit is poured out again. These are the last days, and according to the prophecies, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my Spirit of all on all flesh on the day of Pentecost when the when the people were standing there and they said, "What is this?" Peter said, this is that. Yeah. That was spoken by the prophet Joel. He pointed it out. Yeah, this That's is what that. what I love. He, mm-hmm. he pointed that out, and then he goes back, and he talks about the prophecy that David told mm-hmm. about Jesus. And so, you know, and I'm saying it Sunday, according to the internet, Peter would have been a false prophet because he didn't go verse by verse then mm-hmm. on the very first sermon. So He just preached repentance. He just, yeah, just preached, mm-hmm. preached, whatever. Well, preached we're going to heal repentance. the seek. And that's... <laughs> That's what we need. We, 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 we need the Holy Spirit again to show up. I mean, just like that, Pentecost being the first revival, and we're praying for revival, but before we get there, we need to be filled with the Spirit before anything will happen, before He will, mm-hmm. before revival will come. We need another outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Another, that's why I said we need, essentially, another Pentecost. We need, mm-hmm. we need that, out, it. that outflow, that, that overflowing. You broke down the Greek word dunamis. Dynamite. Dynamite, the power to do. You started. You, you got on do. that for a couple of minutes. Yeah, the this the the explosive power. I thought that was so cool that the the power dunamis it is just explosive. I mean, literally where we get yeah. dynamite, dynamite from. And mm-hmm. you think about that, like what an illustration for just the way that the power is just to to explosive. Not you know, it, it can consume mm-hmm. an entire area, can consume an, an entire person. It has the power to to break things apart, to mm-hmm. shatter things. Uh, you know, it, it's explosive, so it's burning. I mean, mm-hmm. there's just that, that's such a loaded word when you think about mm-hmm. it like that. Like this is this is so explosive. You know, it can <laughs> it has the it has so much power behind it. It, it can hurt you, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. You know, yeah. like I said when I when I blew the leaf blower on Tyler. Let's like, talk can, about the leaf. Blower. It can blow the house down. I like that. Where'd Did you, you get- expect it? No, where'd you get that? I'm glad uh, that was it. Popped up in my head. That was the one I told you. I was it. It popped up in my head. When I read that, the, the mighty rushing wind, and it, the first thing when I wrote it down originally, I wanted to do it with the Bible, obviously, because mm-hmm. I felt like that would have been just powerful, like this is the word of God and, mm-hmm. you know, the mighty rushing wind. And then I, I kind of sat back and I was like, man, this, with Somebody. all of the, like, the, the church that kicked that Bible on, on Super right. Bowl Sunday mm-hmm. and all the other weird little illustrations, I was like, you know, I'll just use a bigger a book. book. <laughs> just a, a regular book because I don't want to give anybody yep. any type of thing, you know, to get their feelings hurt over something like that. And then, you know, I was like, you know, also I don't want it to come across that I was like disrespecting the word of God. True. Uh, but then, like I told you later, I was glad I didn't because of how bent up the pages got. <laughs> and I'm I'm so like such a, a stickler for like the perfect, like I hate when there's like the people that bend the book all the way down and there's the crease. Mm-hmm. Like I want it to be so pristine. Like if you dog ear the pages, 
No, just do it. please go somewhere else. Like get a bookmark, put a piece <laughs> of paper, some toilet paper in there. I don't care. I can't. Like I want it to be clean mm-hmm. and perfect. Look, I don't. Do know. you it's mark just, up your Bible? Do you write? I Bible? highlight it. Yeah, okay. but like I'm not like I'm not that dog ear guy. Mm-hmm. Like I'll put I'll cut I'll cut a sticky note and and stick it on there or something. But I, you are not gonna find me bending a page. So everybody watching, <laughs> do you guys? Uh, are you born again? Are you spirit filled? Are you seeking daily the experience and the expression of the Holy Spirit in your life? And if so, where, when, how? What is the response? How does that happen? Uh, what, you, what difference has the Holy Spirit made in your life? Um, I know that for me, uh, when I was a children's pastor, 1982, 1982 to 85, I, I preached on the Holy Spirit because we wanted the children to understand that that gift, the gift of the power of the Holy Spirit. Did I ever tell you the story how I, I hid the chicken in my shirt? No. <laughs> Great story. I was a good children's pastor. Maybe I'll go back to doing that. <laughs> well, do we need one here? Or no, we've got we've got that covered. But I, anyway, I was a children's pastor and I took a rubber chicken and I stuck it in my shirt, button up shirt, with nothing but the head of the chicken sticking out. It was a rubber chicken. Oh. Uh, the chicken head sticking out. And I was talking about the Holy Spirit will give you boldness. He'll make you bold. You won't be afraid. You'll share your faith. You'll tell people about Jesus. God will take the, the chicken out of you. And I ripped that chicken <laughs> out of my shirt. <laughs> and the kids oh. were like, ah, ah. <laughs> And I swung the chicken around. And then I threw the chicken out into the crowd. And, of course, that chicken, there was 100 50 kids out there, so they started throwing started the chicken all around, and we had to go get it. Small child in the but face. I made that point, <laughs> boldness, but you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Mm. The Holy Spirit will take the chicken out of you. That's good. It, it was good. Bring, it was... I'll bring that back. That's hilarious. And I'll bring, uh, I'll bring one of the real chickens from the house and just <laughs> throw it out in the crowd. <laughs> and let it run loose. Run no, the I... Uh, I, I, I don't know. that The illustration, it was really cool for me. And I was... It was when I got there, I was like, man, I, cause you don't want to like something like that. I was trying yeah, not you to, don't want it just to go bad. rush it and I didn't want it to go bad, you know? And another thing that I'm glad it wasn't a Bible cause it probably would have ripped the pages out. Cause that thing was yeah, strong thin pages. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then <laughs> you got up, you wanted me to spray everybody with it. And I was like, bro, ah, I'm know. glad you but didn't do Miss Marie on the front row. Cause right? she had her hair all pretty. That's why I was like, no, all, Your the hair's all pretty. with their hair done up. I won't, I won't mess it up, but it was, that was cool to me. Cause I was like, this will come across mm-hmm. when, when I really feel like God gave me that. And when, 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 it, when it came in, I was like, this is, this will be cool. I mm-hmm. really like this. Okay. Sticks in, in the room. I basically have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means to us or to you. Uh, but if you're talking about your faith, then this is the, probably what you need to be hearing, the presence this of the Holy the, Spirit. This is the place to the be. The answer. The, the Holy Spirit will give you the answers that you need. Your prayer life needs to be God just that way. James said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And so if you're in that situation where you don't know what you're doing, you're not alone. And many of us feel the same way from time to time. But what I do when I get to that feeling is I start praying for wisdom. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you wisdom. Get counsel from wise people. But the Holy Spirit, you need to be praying that the Holy Spirit will come alive inside of you. Because God wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give yes. you spirit. And something phenomenal that I just heard from a, a sermon over the weekend was, and oh man, it was so good. Um, it was, uh, we need to quit. We need to quit praying like we're trying to like talk a hostage, a hostage out of the situation. You know, well, because you think about it, there's so many people had their prayers, you know, oh, God, please do this. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're, we're afraid to literally boldly come into the throne room oh, anymore. Oh, like they're begging. And at, yeah, like mm-hmm. begging God to show up and just, you know, tiny little, you know, oh, you know, help me get through the day and that kind of thing. We're afraid to just boldly step into the throne room and be like, I want your wisdom. I want your power. I want more of your Holy Spirit. I want more of this. I want to be able to reach people more effectively. I want Mm -hmm. you to show up in my situation so that I can show people who you are and how you showed up for me. I want people to see that my life has been so gripped and so changed by you and how absolutely, absolutely, uh, incredibly that you have gripped my life that I can't help, but you know, not contain Mm -hmm. it. And I want to get it out there. We just, we've got to stop praying. Like, you know, we're just trying to negotiate God into trying to beg God doing something something for us. And, you know, hopefully we're not on his bad side. Mm -hmm. And for me, the greatest difference, since I asked the question earlier, um, the greatest difference for me has always been the, the boldness. Um, 
I was a, as a young man, as a child, I was pretty timid. I was introverted. I was very timid. Um, I don't, I, I grew out of it as I got older, but when I came to faith, I always felt like I was unprepared. My, my pastor was a genius and, you know, he knew so much of the Bible and I was in relationship with people that were very biblically sound. Uh, I didn't feel like I, I, I knew that much and knew enough. And so I just prayed, man. I, I went to the throne room and I just prayed. I just want, I want this. I want this experience. I want the Holy Spirit in my life active. I submit, I surrender, I invite Fill me, overflow me, and pour out of me. Speak to me, through me, and in spite of me. And for the, all these years, he's been faithful to do that. That's, uh, that's one, the, one of the things that I, especially when I was first getting going with this, and not that I haven't stopped, but one of the big things that I constantly pray for was the boldness like Elijah, the boldness yes. like John the Baptist. Because <clears throat> um, obviously that's just a huge hallmark of the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just something we, we all need um, just to be so much yes. more incredibly bold. And just like that, like I think so many of us, probably through our entire lives, there's always somebody else that will look towards and be like, I wish I had mm-hmm. that level of, of mm-hmm. knowledge about the Bible. I wish I had that kind of anointing over it. And it's like, okay, maybe you'll get there someday. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll pass them. You've yes. got to focus on the, the path that God has you yes. on, the purpose that mm-hmm. God has you on. And that's why I love that phrase that we're all, we're all working for the same boss, but we're all in different departments and we're all called yes. to reach somebody in a different way. You, Absolutely. Know, you, can't, you can't have a person in finance trying to go work in marketing. Yeah. Marketing has to handle that and finance has mm-hmm. to handle that, but you need both people to function Absolutely. as a business. So that's the whole thing Be you. with the body of with the body of Christ is that we all have a part we're supposed to fill. And unfortunately, there's just so much division lately mm-hmm. with everybody thinking that we're all supposed to be a hand or we're all supposed mm-hmm. to be a foot. We're all supposed to do everything exactly the same way. Yeah, and that's if you're just not an apostle, not I don't how we're going to reach the world. Yeah, and, and that's the we are members of the body in particular. I think they overlooked that little word in particular, which means different. It's a different situation. Um, I'm thankful that as time goes on, you get more comfortable in your skin and you get more comfortable staying in your lane and doing what God called you to do. I always wondered why, you know, God wouldn't use me like that. I would see somebody and I go, why does God use me like that? That's not my calling. That's not my anointing. I'm not there to do that. Um, but when I found what I'm, what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm super comfortable in that. And that's how you know you found your groove is when it gets... You start to flow. Yeah. We see that in you. You're starting to flow now. Every time you do this, you're getting more comfortable. And, you know, Sunday, for instance, and somebody actually wrote it into one of the comments. They said you were funny, that you <laughs> you are a remarkably funny person, but, you know, you wouldn't know it if they don't know you. But you when you when <laughs> when you went Mexican or Spanish just for a second and said, we're going to heal the seek. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, I had a couple of things. It was, I messed that word up. And then, you know, I was, I went through a, a puberty moment somewhere <laughs> and I was like, well, that's great. So. <laughs> but you laughed at it and you went on, which made it so endearing. That was really cool. I mean, it, it's just beautiful. It's just so you're, I just, I don't know. That's my, my sense of humor. I, I always worry about like, cause you don't want to do too much and it seemed like a comedy session, but then you don't want to. Yes. I don't want to be super dry or everybody thinks I'm angry because of my, my resting believer face, um, my RBF. And then, you know, uh, you don't want, I don't want, cause my, my sense of humor can be so dry. Well, and I, it's, it's hard when people don't know you and you throw mm-hmm. something out and they're like, Oh, like the, the one lady, uh, when I made the joke about you that one Sunday, when I wanted, we wanted to sing more than able, and then the the lyrics messed up, and you didn't want to do it because you you just Ooh. didn't want to do it. And then when I made the joke about it, and I was like, "Oh, I'm just kidding." Like obviously, I was just joking. Mm-hmm. And then the one lady made the comment on YouTube, like, "Oh, I don't listen to people that tell lies," and then immediately say that they're joking. I'm like, I, "You don't okay. even know you, you." God bless you. You based your whole. That's a whole different. Her whole thing. judgment of you was on one one little one line. Second, that's great, isn't that's, it? But that's typical in the world these days. Yep. That's how we do we it. Look at the headlines and forget everything else inside of it. Praise the Lord. Well, it was a great sermon, and it was absolutely what we needed at the time on Pentecost Sunday. Well done, well delivered. I think everybody watching will agree it was a wonderful word. Uh, I'm watching the anointing flow out of your life. What's coming up Sunday? It's coming up Sunday. I am continuing. Pretty much where we left off. Uh, if you want to get ahead of uh, ahead of the game, um, 
much more just in Acts 2. Okay. Uh, I've got quite a bit of scripture, um, so I'm probably not going to have everybody stand up for the entire thing. Well, it seems like a lot to me, but then it's the, the context for it, I mm-hmm. think, is really important because I don't want to... I don't want to just, you know, oh, here's the one verse, and then, yeah, we can go off of all that. I want, you know, Give faith comes by hearing the word of God, and I, I don't know. There's something that I really want to make sure we hear the context about it. It doesn't hurt but, us to uh, read the whole thing. Acts 2, continuing on there. Uh Give you some some background. It's the the it's contagious faith is going to mm-hmm. be the title of the message, and um, we're going to find Sweet. out why the apostle or why the the disciples apostles uh, had to wait ten days because Ooh. there was a reason for there was a reason for the wait. So if you're, if you're wondering why God always has you waiting in a situation, there's always a reason for it. So come Sunday, come early if you want to find out why. They had to wait for the 10 days. Looking forward to it. And with that, send out an invitation to buy somebody to come yes. be with you. Make sure, yes, make sure you're inviting people. That is that is how we will. If you've noticed somebody missing, send them a little note this week. Say, hey, we've been missing you. I want to see you back. It's exactly. getting better and better each week. I'm loving it. Thank you, Sheila. Super excited. What? Oh, I just saw it. Uh, yeah, so Sunday, 10 a.m., come in, Contagious Faith. Be ready. Acts chapter 2. You guys have a great rest see of the week. See you there. Hey, I hope that message spoke to you today. I want to say thank you to everybody who is involved at Family Church and those who help support this ministry. If you would like to get more involved, you can click the link in the description or head to our website, familychurch.social. We would love to connect with you, and you can find all of our social media platforms on our website. Also, if this message spoke to you in any way today and you liked it, consider sharing it on your social media in any way that you would like so that we can help reach those far from God and return them to the arms of the Father. We want to see God work through you. We love you. Thanks again for listening. God bless you.